Hi, this is Ryan with HUSNG.com, and we're here today reviewing a match played at the $10 regular speed level on PokerStars. And here we will begin. Facing a 3x raise out of position on the first hand, I think that's going to be a correct fold um, with Jack-7 offsuit. You don't have information about this opponent, and Jack-7 is a pretty weak hand uh, to play out of position this deep stacked. When you have some reads, that's the type of hand that you can actually call with. 9-3 um, offsuit, you can start out by folding. Um, some more skilled players that are playing a weak opponent may decide to raise that from the button pretty early, but open folding 9-3 offsuit is going to be pretty standard. Um, just as folding here with 8-5 offsuit is also standard. These are just pretty weak hands, and you're probably better off just folding them pre-flop than trying to play them, um, especially against an unknown opponent. Raising 6-5 offsuit here on the button I think is fine. I like your sizing, a min raise is fine, a uh, 3x raise would also be fine, or anything in between. Now you face a 3-bet from this opponent, uh, I think a fold here is going to be best. 6-5 offsuit uh, is a pretty weak hand overall, even though we do have a positional advantage. Um, it's often going to be dominated, um, and it just doesn't play very well against a 3-bet range. Even a wider 3-bet range contains so many hands that are much stronger than 6-5 offsuit. Um, if your opponent is 3-betting something like 8-7, eight, 9-8, eight, eight, you consider that a pretty weak, a pretty wide 3-betting range, and 6-5 offsuit isn't even as strong as those hands. So this is just too weak of a hand to call, given the size of his 3-bet. Um, and I'd probably only call with this kind of a hand against probably a min 3-bet to 60 chips, um, maybe to 80 chips as well, but I'd probably fold it if they made it anything over 100 here. Um, certainly 140 chips. So I think a uh, fold here is good. Seven two suited. Uh, again, that's going to be a, the same type of hand as I talked about with nine three offsuit. Really, um, the advantage here is that you're suited, but it is a weaker hand than nine three. Um, not talking about the suited aspect of it. Uh, so you can raise these hands early. A min raise is fine. You can also open fold them. It's probably going to be pretty close overall. Uh, I usually try to look for ways to actually play hands, especially when I'm in position. So min raising here is something that I like to do with seven two suited. Um, so I really like your play there with 7-2 suited. It's just important not to overplay some of these hands post-flop. When you flop a pair of 2s or a pair of 7s, you don't want to build a huge pot most of the time because you're not going to have a very strong hand um, on a lot of different boards. Of course, when you hit a flush or you hit 2-pair or trips, um, those are going to be hands that you can obviously play pretty strong on most board textures. Uh, but just single-pair hands, you want to be careful not to overplay them because those single pairs are pretty weak in the grand scheme of things um, compared to the hands that you get action from uh, more often than not. Okay, we'll see what you do with ace-queen here. I definitely like a 3-bet for value. Uh, you made a 3-bet to 180. I think that's pretty standard among most players, winning or not. Uh, it's a pretty decent size. You can go a little larger too when you're deep, 200, 220 chips is going to be fine. Uh, about 180 chips I think is the minimum level, maybe 160 is the minimum acceptable level I'd say here. Anything lower than that you're probably not getting enough value uh, relative to your hand strength here. And when you start to get over 240, you don't really want to do that, you don't want to make that large of a size unless your opponent is uh, particularly loose pre-flop. So I like the range of 180 to 220 chips in this area as your 3 bet size. Um, I think that's good. It's essential to be three betting this hand because it's so strong. The average player is going to call with plenty of weaker hands, um, and ace queen is just a very strong hand. We'll see how he reacts to your three bet. Okay, any flat calls? Um, with this kind of a board, I still think leading is probably going to be best. Um, you could also check raise here too. There are some positive aspects of check raising. When you check here, if he checks back, the turn's not a diamond, it's going to be a clear value bet situation for you. If you check and he checks back and there's a diamond on the turn, it's going to be a clear spot where you're probably not going to want to bet at the pot too often, um, especially since you have pretty you have some showdown value in that situation. Um, so your turn decision's going to be very easy. That's the one advantage of checking here. Um, furthermore, check raising, even against, an opponent, against pretty much any opponent, check raising here is going to be fine for value. 
there's plenty of weaker hands and draws that are going to get all in on this flop. And if you check raise, you can basically guarantee that you're going to get the stack all in. Even if you bet, even if you bet something like 180 chips, you can make a committing raise to 600 plus chips, or you can just shove, and you take advantage of the times that he decides to bluff, and you also take advantage of the times he decides to value bet with something like a jack, or even some sort of a draw. Then he's either folding or he's committing to the whole pot, um, and you're not in a bad situation when you have top pair, top kicker. Even on this board, you're not in that bad of a situation most of the time, um, and you should be well ahead of most players' ranges at this level. So checking has those advantages. Um, betting has advantages too. There's plenty of weak hands they're going to call here for most players. There's diamonds, there's straight draws, there's weaker pairs, weaker queens, jack x. Um, you can get plenty of hands to call if you lead here. The tricky part about leading is you might find yourself on the turn with a diamond and you're going to be in a tougher spot where it's going to be hard for you sometimes to give up that pot when you face aggression. Uh, but it is usually going to be the correct thing to do. So betting something like 240 chips on this flop, 280 chips on this flop, even a pot size bet on this flop, isn't going to be too bad. You just got to keep in mind that you have to play the turn card. You have to keep in mind if there's four flush out there, just because you have top pair, top kicker, and you're in a big pot, doesn't mean you're necessarily pot committed. So if you can avoid doing those things, I think a lead here is going to be good. Um, if that sounds too tricky for you right now, I think you should definitely... Um, Take a look at some videos and post some hands in these three bet pot situations on a board similar to this, and you should work on that. But in the meantime, a check is definitely going to be a fine play. Um, I'd personally probably lead here, but I do like a check raise against a lot of opponents. Speaking very generally, in the regular speed games at the lower levels, you're probably going to find more loose passive opponents, whereas the turbo speeds, you're probably going to find a higher percentage of players that are more aggressive, maybe even like maniac type players. So you might consider check raising in the turbos, whereas you might consider leading here in the regular speeds. That's going to be very general and you can't apply that across the board, but that is an observation that myself and many other players have found that the regular speed players are a little bit more loose passive, while the turbo players are more aggressive. Um, so that's one thing to consider. And we'll see what you did here. If you do bet, I think it's essential to bet large. I don't really like a small bet here. Uh, a lot of players might say, hey, you can bet small here, and then if the turn's on a diamond, we can bet a little bigger. If the stack sizes were a little shorter, I could understand that logic. But if you're betting something like 180 or 140 chips, just a small bet on the flop, and they flat call you, it's going to be it's still going to be pretty difficult to commit your whole stack on the turn. You're going to have to make a pot size better or larger. Um, and the stack sizes just don't really line up for that logic in my mind. Uh, so I think a, a decent sized flop bet for value is good. If you face a raise, I think you can still get it all in. Your hand's plenty strong here. Um, and we'll just see what happens on the turn. But the turn isn't going to be a diamond all the time. It's not even going to be a diamond a quarter of the time here, given the cards that are showing. Um, so over 75% of the time, the turn probably is going to be pretty easy for most players to play and usually that's going to be straight value. You're not going to want to give a free card on this draw heavy of a board um, when you see a non-diamond turn. And that's going to be true almost all the time. But we'll see what you did here and how he reacts. You bet 270, I think that's a pretty good size. Uh, he goes all in, so I think you should definitely be calling the all in here. And he has a weaker queen. So we have case in point of a weaker hand getting all in here. Um, of course we don't expect queen 10 to ever really fold here. Uh, but I think you played this hand fine. Uh, like I said, the check raise is an option, but I think leading was perfectly fine there. You played the hand well. Um, okay, let's talk about this here. You're six big blinds deep. Um, you just won a big pot against an opponent, and you have jack two offsuit. I think this should be an open fold. Um, two reasons. One, if you decide to limp, I think he's shoving a lot of the time. Uh, opponents, on average, after losing a pot, being short stacked are probably going to shove pretty wide here and jack two offsuit doesn't match up very well against most shoving ranges. Um, two, if you open shove I think you're going to be called wider. That's kind of the same concept I just talked about um, with limping. And basically you have an opponent that's short stacked and just lost a big pot. He's probably not going to fold um, a large number of hands. He's probably going to call wider than usual here if anything. So I think just open folding this hand is going to be best when you're six big blinds deep. You probably don't have the fold equity to shove, um, and you probably don't get to see enough flops when you limp to make this 
um, any more profitable than just open folding your hand and losing your small blind. And he shoves there and you ended up folding. Here with Queen 10 suited, if he shoves, I would definitely call. Um, you snap call there, I think that's absolutely correct. And it looks like you'll chop the pot. But Queen 10 suited is plenty strong in that situation to make the call. Okay, here you have King Jack offsuit. This is another problem with limping some hands I don't think you should early on. You limp the Jack 2, you got shoved on. Um, now you're kind of playing like a trap type game with the King Jack. You're limping, hoping he shoves light, and then you call. Um, in this situation, I think the concept that he'll still call wide, it still applies really. I think you can just open shove this hand for value and plenty of weaker hands are going to call you. I think that's the best way to play it. Um, I don't see a major advantage of limping here. You may get a wider range of hands to shove on you, you may not. Um, but I just think the overriding theme here is that he's going to call wide out of position. Uh, it's likely that he's going to call loose out of position. So you should just shove this hand for value when you're seven big blinds deep. Uh, when you get into limping, you get into a lot of guessing games, and I think too often those guessing games are not actually correct. Uh, and then you end up costing yourself value. Okay, so he shoves there and you call. Um, that's fine. He has jack-10. That's a hand I'd really expect him to probably call with anyways. And you'll take this match. So this was a pretty short match here. Uh, I think you did some things well. I think you played the ace-queen hand fine. Um, your opening ranges were pretty good. Uh, your queen-10 call in the end game was good. The one thing I didn't like was your limp with jack-2 offsuit. Um, and that may be indicative of playing a little bit too loosely or maybe playing too many hands in certain situations, um, especially under 10 big blinds deep. So one thing that I'd like to take a look at in the future is probably your knowledge in the end game, um, how you respond to situations when your 10 big blinds are less deep. Most of the time you're probably best off playing shove or fold when you're 7 or 8 big blinds deep. Um, there are some exceptions to that, but I didn't see this player, this opponent as being an exception to that rule or to that idea. Otherwise, everything you really showed me in this match, I think, was pretty good, pretty positive. Um, you're playing, you're making good decisions throughout this match. So just that one end game situation is really what I think um, you can take out of this particularly and work on. Um, and that's something that can lead to a lot of other things, a lot of picking up different concepts in the end game that you may not be aware of, um, and it can really help improve your overall game.